Old Man's War by John Scalzi is one of many military science fiction books that would tell a tale of big guns and big bugs in outer space. Not an original concept by any stretch, but Old Man's War does put an original spin on it. The book follows John Perry, a 75-year-old retired advertising writer who, on his 75th birthday, visits his wife's grave to say goodbye and then enlists in the Colonial Defence Force agreeing to be transported to the other side of the galaxy to protect Earth's colonies against all manner of hostile alien threats. In this world, everybody on Earth has the option of enlisting at the age of 75, with the promise of being made young again as long as you're willing to fight, although the details of how this is possible aren't readily available to those living on Earth. The book is then told in three acts, the first of which follows John and a group of other 75-year-olds as they leave Earth and embark on their new lives. He makes friends of a group that label themselves the Old Farts, and the majority of this act explores the characters as 75-year-olds coming to terms with their new surroundings and adapting to life in the Defence Force. For me, this was the most enjoyable part of the book, as the group looked back over their lives, offering up amusing observations and philosophical musings that helped settle the reader into this world. But they can't stay 75 forever, and eventually they are introduced to the technology that will allow them to be young again, with genetically and technologically enhanced bodies that would outperform any normal human body and give them the edge in the battles they would soon face. However, the first thing all of them do is have sex. Lots and lots of sex. The second act follows John through basic training and will feel familiar to anyone that's ever seen a film with a hard ass drill instructor. Here we get an inkling of the dangers that await and are introduced to more of the technology that will enable them to be bad ass killing machines. The book still retains its humour and there was one moment involving John's drill instructor and a tattoo that actually made me put the book down and laugh out loud. The third act then follows John as he embarks on his military career, going from a fresh-faced new recruit to a battle-hardened veteran. As he fights battle after battle, each offering up new, deadly alien species, the book takes on a slightly more serious tone as it approaches its climax and does offer up some genuinely emotional moments. John is an enjoyable character to follow. He does have that annoying tendency of just being able to be the best at everything he does and conveniently being the character to come up with the idea that saves the day, etc. But here, I didn't find it too jarring and was happy to accept this as he developed as a character. I also liked that there seemed to be a subtle change in his character when he was made young again as he does embrace a more carefree spirit that would come with youth. There are clear comparisons in this story and setup to Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers. However, I think it's fair to say that this book is an easier read, with less focus on politics and a not so realistic interpretation of military life. There are lots of great concepts within the book, such as the Brain Pal, a computer that exists in each soldier's brain and can be communicated with through thought alone. The skip drives that enable the ships to move about the universe are also given some focus, and the concept of how they work certainly isn't straightforward. Luckily, having just read Dark Matter, I was all up to date on the multiverse. Then there's the weapons, nanotechnology and mind transfer, so plenty to keep your mind busy. There was a few things I would have liked to have seen explored more. For instance, fighting was always the first option, and although the book does approach this matter, it doesn't really do it in any meaningful way, and I would have enjoyed further exploration of what a negotiated peace might have looked like. It's the same for a lot of the philosophical ideas contained within this book, as they are generally only explored on the surface and lack depth. Is what we are left with is a very enjoyable, action-packed book that might actually be better off for not going too deep into any of its philosophies. It's a book I would definitely recommend, and at some point in the future I will move on to the other books in the series, as the universe that Scousy has created is an interesting, terrifying place that I'd be happy to revisit. <laughs>